This is probably the hardest matchup that you can encounter when it comes to Branded Chimera, and I went to see how this deck does against Unchained, and in my second locals playing this, I played overall two locals with the deck in paper. The second one, round one, I faced Unchained. I managed to steal a game, but ended up losing in time because it was a really uphill battle. It was really hard to win. It was really hard to interact with my opponent when everything I do destroys. You can go in interesting lines to OTK with your big Chimera Illusion King, which cannot be destroyed by battle and cannot destroy by battle, but still, it's a matchup that I really wanted to figure out come next regional season. So we start off, I win the die roll in our second match here, and this is going to be my hand. Uh, Ash Blossom, Super Volley, Cornfield, uh, Burfamat, and Fright for Patrick. And they have Herald of the Abyss, Escape of the Unchained, Harpy's Feather, Ruster, Imperm, and Fiendish Rhino Warrior. So one thing that you could do here, so of course this deck, you should be playing around Droll as much as possible. And... If we go Kotal here, right, we don't get to our Chimera lineup, while if we go for the Patrick here and get hit with Droll, we could play a little bit longer because Cornfield can actually add the Gazelle that could net you more advantage here. So we'll start off with the Patrick because this is, um, in this specific hand, it's going to be a little bit better to play around Droll. So uh, we started off with the Kotal. Go for the Mirrored Swords Knight. It's really unfortunate to draw the Burfamat here, but sometimes you will just draw it. We play two because we can't play one, and we just go for that. Now we uh, go for a Poly here just to trigger the Burfamat to summon the Mirror Swords Knight on our opponent's turn to have some sort of uh, interaction and more follow up as well. Otherwise, we pretty much pass on Super Poly uh, set. So we're going to be going for the Burfamat and the Edgem Chain here to add us more cards to hand. And now, pretty much, we have uh, the Mirror Swords Knight that could get us some stuff from deck, continue our next turn, uh, start it off fresh, you know, if our opponent didn't really open well, which, um, in this case, he didn't really open well. And then we also have Ash to back it up and Super Poly. So, again, this is what you could do after being hit with Imperm. Sometimes Imperm just shuts down this deck, so it happens. Uh, to escape... One Fiendish Rhino Warrior doesn't even fire off the Harpy's Feather Dusty here. During the end phase, uh, when they can no longer interact, I go for summoning the Gazelle because I already have two Burfamat in circulation, unfortunately, and we draw the Droll for turn. So I start off here with the Chimera just to get the Negate. Um, this could be Imperms and stuff like that. This could technically be Unchained Monsters as well, even though that won't probably be the case because they probably would have started it. So getting two negates in the graveyard while I have Chimera, and of course, I know that they didn't open well, so hand ripping them during the end of the turn will be even more impactful. Um, we go for that. Now we basically can go full combo again here. We summon back the Mirror Swords Knight, and now again, there always comes a time where you have to decide if you want to pop stuff if you're playing against Unchained. Technically here, because this is my second matchup, I did know that I'm playing against Unchained. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known. I didn't see any cards yet. Um, so you have to consider if you want to pop cards. And if a Guardian Chimera can gain you more advantage than you are afraid of losing to any float effect that they might activate, then you can consider this, and this is what I actually do. So I didn't want to keep the Droll here because probably wouldn't have been effective. I'd rather, much rather have the Ash Blossom to answer something that could float uh, if I destroy something. And again, Chimera draws two, and you know, you, you probably get what you want out of that, and this is, you know, good enough. Um, we pop the Fiendish Rhino, um, gets the Sharvara, and that gets another set. And basically, right here, uh, you know, I was sure he's going to have something here, um, maybe, you know, summoning from Graveyard, um, but he had only Escape and not the Chamber, um, so pretty much that's going to be game with uh, the Illusion Beast here. So, again, even though my opponent didn't really play, um, we did manage to, to clutch it up um, while destroying cards and, you know, playing around specific interactions, and now he makes, makes me go first, which is uh, funny because I open really good for going second, and uh, yeah, I pretty much set the book and pass. So we Ash the Prison. There are a lot of Ash targets here. Um, he opened fairly well. Um, this is basically full combo, right? Um, but we do waste the Ash on this because this card is just um, pretty much incredible. It gets you to everything. Prosp um, finds Rakea here, which is good. 
puts it back. Um, now, you know, I know that I'm not going to be dead because of prosperity. So at least that's good. And my plan was to set the book. And hopefully, if that doesn't work out, um, you know, not hopefully, but if that doesn't work out, evenly match to clear and hopefully get something that allows me to play the next turn. So um, pop, pop, this is basically like, you know, full combo. But here I wanted to book the Sharvara because I didn't want him to go into uh, the Lord of Yama. But thankfully, <laughs> he has all the dogs he needs in hand. So he's just going to continue playing some more. Rakea floors to Sarama, Sarama sets and pops. Um, another set, and then you can go for the lower Yama, get the Arua, Arua target, pop, float again, summon the blue, and just goes for damage here. Wondering if he could have gone into the Xyz. Uh, then end of battle phase, I dropped the evenly, which was really good, and now I'm like thinking to myself, okay, this is interesting, but yeah. Considering that I have talents here and they all float, I can just go Lightning Storm, talents, draw, and, you know, hopefully draw something good because my hand is not playable yet. So, I'm going to do that. He is going to activate, um, which is interesting. You could have not activated that, right? Um, but he goes for the Abominable Unchained Soul here. Talents to draw, draw the Swords Knight, and that's um, full combo, but it still doesn't necessarily win the game immediately here. Um, just because, you know, you're not going to get to a lot, right? Um, so I do go for the Chimera um, in defense here. Chain one, two, three, search from deck. And now there are two things that I can go for. I can either just set the Imperm, get the Chimera Fusion from the graveyard and just pass on that. Or I can actually, uh, which I'm not sure I actually did, maybe I did it after I summoned. I should have done it like right now. I don't remember if I did. We'll see in a second. Um, or we could go for big damage here. Um, fuse away these two for the big king. Uh, I did get the camera fusion. Good. And I use, why did I use this? I could have, I should have used polymerization, which I didn't. This is definitely a misplay because now I can return it from the graveyard anyway. So now with this, I can attack three times and pretty much leave him on less than 2,000, I think, right? Because it's 100 and then 6,000. So it's 19 afterwards. And you still have a Chimera. You're still going to rip one during the end phase. And you're also going to, uh, you know, summon with the Chimera, get full follow-up next turn. So it's good. Um, but should have definitely used the Poly here. It doesn't necessarily matter. It, is, it does matter because you can set this, summon uh, the Burfamat, gain cards. You can get a Chimera during the next turn. So yeah, it was definitely a misplay. Set the Imperm. I didn't attack uh, into it because it cannot destroy cards by battle. Um, but now I just go... I went for the Swords, swords Knight, but I ended up regretting it. I just imperm the Yama here. Um, there's no reason for me to negate the Sharvara if they don't have anything to pop the, the set with. I'm not super concerned by it. And here, with this setup currently, even if they have a set, it is already OTK, right? Because if you think about it, you don't have to negate the, the Sharvar to set because even if it is escape or chamber, it doesn't really matter what it is. During the end phase, we're going to summon the Mirror Swords Knight and we're going to just attack Yama four times and just OTK. And if even if it's uh, something like uh, escape, we can negate it with Kotal because we already have the camera. So yeah, this is pretty much it for me. Um, this is a good way to just out-resource um, the Unchained stuff. Now he's like reading the effect. He's like not really sure how that works. But basically, it attacks a number of times uh, each uh, up to uh, the materials used for it on monsters only. So this is supposed to OTK your opponent, basically. So um, we use three materials. We use the Chimera and the two Illusions, right? This requires Chimera plus one or more Illusion monsters. And... Once it's attacks during the end of the damage step, it zero outs, outs the, the attack of the, the monster in battle. They both cannot be destroyed, and uh, it's negated as well. So you attack into it, attack, attack, and same thing with Mirror Swords Knight. Cannot be destroyed or destroyed because it's illusion, so it's basically just like a lot of damage. Um, 
This was it, not super exciting, but can show you a little bit how to play around Unchained, how to use your non-engine, um, uh, specifically against this type of deck, which is pretty hard most of the time. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one, learned a little bit of something new. Leave a comment below, what do you think about this matchup? What do you think about Chimera Fusion versus Unchained? Leave a thumbs up, subscribe, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.